So today we are going to be talking a little bit about responsive web design and getting your getting back to your templates, getting started with the coding again, and thinking about how to start preparing for moving to your phone and tablet uh, designs. Okay. Um, this is our main.css, which um, you've been working with. Uh, as you will recall, there are several sections to this document. There is the reset style sheet. Again, this is just review. Uh, the reset style sheet needs to be there so that you are able to um, have complete control of your page. This overrides any of the browser defaults. Uh, there is the main section right here. Uh, we're going to use this for styles that will stay the same across all screen sizes. Uh, this is particularly important uh, now that we're going to be moving, um, excuse me, into the uh, phone and the tablet uh, screen sizes. So, and um, then we have for the different, we have our different media queries. We've got the the mobile, I'm sorry, the phone portrait view, we've got the tablet portrait view, and then we have the computer uh, widescreen view, okay? Um, and so far we've been working in this area, okay? Uh, I'm gonna remove this just because we don't need that now for our purposes, it takes up some space. Now uh, you will most likely have more code in your file uh, than, than I have, okay? Now, we've talked about how these different media queries are set up, but I just want to go over that again. Uh, we have the, each media query has this at media screen and minimum width for the size of your screen. And so this is minimum width for the phone. Each of them has this uh, little curly brace that opens that section and closes this section, okay? And uh, if you just highlight these, you can see that they are connected to ones at the bottom of that section. Now it is very easy to uh, get confused by this because it looks like you have an extra little curly brace down here at the bottom uh, when we start adding our rules in. Okay, So what we want to do is just before that little curly brace we want to add in a comment and I recommend that you all do this uh, in all caps do not Ever delete the below curly brace. Okay. And actually, I want to write and mobile and phone. Oops. Do not ever delete the below curly brace. And I want to just copy and paste this into the different sections. And tablet and computer. Okay. And we remember that um, this slash asterisk and the asterisk slash. Uh, comments it out so we don't ever, the, computer, the browser doesn't ever uh, see what is going on, going on there. Okay. Uh, now there are going to be some readings uh, about design for your uh, phone and your tablet, uh, especially in terms of your fonts and, and font families and things like that. Um, so I'm not going to go over that too much right now, only to say that for your phone and your tablets, your fonts usually need to be bigger and better spaced uh, than you actually think that they would be. All right. Um, so this is this is just a quick overview of of this document again. And uh, if you have questions, of course, uh, we'll have time in class to ask those questions when you meet uh, one on one uh, with me. Okay. Um, what I want to do now is talk a little bit about creating some sketches to help you with the transition that will uh, that you're going to have from your uh, computer to your phone and tablet. Because right now we have our computer screen, right? Um, we've got our header. You've got a little 
summary personal sort of artist statement that I've asked you to write. And then we have our left side and our right side with a little description and uh, some technical, technical details. And you all have a variation of this in some, in some way. And what we need to be able to do is think about how each of these elements on the page, the body, right? Right now this body is in red, border, centered. The body, the background color of the HTML, the background color of our body, the header, this paragraphs, the left, the right, how those are all going to transition into the new spaces, the new, the, the phone and the tablet, okay? And we're gonna do that in two ways. First, we're gonna draw some little sketches. So I'm gonna ask you to draw some little sketches uh, to help you uh, with that transition. And then we're going to also uh, do some coding. To, to help with that transition as well. Uh, so for example, uh, let us go into the whiteboard here. So we're gonna have uh, three areas that we're gonna be drawing right now. We have our computer. We will have our tablet. And our phone. And again, I would like you to do these uh, sketches on your own as well. Let's move that a little bit more so we have some room. Okay. Um, and you don't obviously don't have to do this on the computer. Um, if I was in class, I'd be doing this on the, on the whiteboard. So this is our computer screen. That's sort of what it looks like, like, like that. Okay. We also have a tablet that looks something like that. And we have a phone that looks something like that. Okay. Oops. okay so we have these different elements. Now in our, on our uh, computer so far, we have, if you look back at the picture that I just showed you, we have something that looks like this, right? We've got a body that looks about like that wide. Maybe it's a little bit wider like that. Remember we made it about 80%, something along those lines. Um, then I have a, whoops. Then I have a, uh, why is that good? I have my header, which is my name. I have my different paragraph texts that are right there for my personal statements. And then I have the, the left side. And the right side. And if I want to, I can add, you know, the pic that there are pictures in there that are sort of like that big. And then there's some content that goes along with it. And what's, what I would like to do is I can um, label each of these elements. One, two, three, four. Uh, so that I know where each of these things are going and I might even just label these pictures. Now for the tablet, we wanna start thinking about what we wanna do. Um, and the tablet's necessarily gonna be a different size, right? Right now we have this body uh, that is 80% that gives us all these different margins. Do we want a very wide margin in our, in our tablet? No, we probably don't, uh, but we might not want it to go right up against the edge. So maybe the body is, whoops, wrong. Uh, tool. Maybe the body is going to look something like that, right? Where we get to be about 97, 96%. Um, and then the header 
is going to look like that. Our paragraphs, maybe we want everything sort of flush at the same widths there. And then we come to a question. Do we want our, um, do we want things side by side in the tablet? How is that going to look? Now we can draw them looking side by side just to see how that, how that looks. Now that might be too squished for the portrait view of the tablet. Um, so maybe what we want to do is something like that. Where we have our different elements side by side like that. So we're stacked in, in that way. And so now we want to think about, okay, so here we have um, we have element one, we have element two, this is element three, and this is element four. Um, the question becomes, where do we want these pictures to go? Do we want them to go in the middle, like right here, like that, and then to have some content underneath it like we have? Or do we want the pictures to go here, and then perhaps we have content next to it, side by side, okay? And this is why we begin to draw these things out because it helps us understand where things are going to be going on the page. So maybe we do want it like that and we need another left and we need another right, but this helps us understand where we want things to go. And now when we get to the phone, you know, the phone would probably the body we want to have nearly 100% width. So I'm not going to draw that again, but the header is going to go probably almost as wide. And the body, we want that to happen because uh, there isn't nearly as much screen real estate on a, on a, on a phone screen. Uh, so we're going to want to have things that stretch to fill nearly all the entire width of the screen. That way we are taking advantage of uh, all the different elements, uh, all, the diff all the screen real estate that we can take advantage of uh, on the phones. So again, I can draw, and I can write in one, two, three, four, five. And when we start to think about, um, start to think about now the kinds of things that we're going to have to consider. So for example, what are the different widths of the different elements? What are the margins? Are they margin auto? Are they, um, you know, how much spacing is going to be around that? What are the font sizes going to be? Uh, what's the letter spacing? Go ahead going to be for each of these. Is there a justification, you know, um, for the text alignment for each of them? You know, for tablets and phones, justified text is, it is, is often more preferred. Uh, what are the line heights for each of these different elements? Um, what are the floating, right? Are things floating uh, one way or another? And we're going to have to think about how those uh, change and adjust for each of the screen sizes, for this one, for this one, and this one, using the same elements, uh, using the same uh, selectors, right, uh, in, in your style sheets. They're each going to transfer from one to the next. Um, you're going to be coding using the same ones. You're not going to change them around. They're just going to have different properties uh, than they have. So the phone will have one property, the tablet will have another property, uh, the computer will have a different property uh, that goes along with it. Um, not sure if I explained that exactly right. Um, but basically you're going to be using the same selectors and you're just going to be giving them different characteristics and I'll show you how that works. Um, so I would like you to draw these sketches and to number them each of your different elements and some things you'll see that I left off. So I left off like the little subheaders and I left off um, each individual paragraph and, and that kind of thing. 
but these, the more detailed you could get, the more specific it would be. It just would be too much for me to draw in this little space here. Okay. Um, so what we'd like to do now is I'm going to go back to sharing, back to my desktop. We want to take these sketches and we want to think about how the code is connected uh, to it. Okay. So right now um, in our code, you, you, you know that we have just the computer screen taken care of, right? In here. And we want to think about how do we transfer each of these tags, each of these uh, rules, to the other elements. Now we can just copy and paste this and plop them in um, in the different areas and then adjust. But we want to be intentional and deliberate when we're doing this and we want to reduce redundancy. Okay. We want to use the main section for what it's there for, which is to create styles that are going to apply across all the different screen sizes uh, and put them in here so we don't have to duplicate what is coming down below. So for example, I have created this little handout, and this is linked off of the page, uh, for you to help you as you're moving from one place to the next, one screen to the next. So for example, and I'm gonna do this for a couple of them, and uh, then we will uh, see how uh, things will, will transfer. So for my HTML background color, right now I have like a 333, which is a dark gray in there. Um, and I got a text align center, and we know that text align center with a margin auto puts things in the middle. Okay. For my body, I have a background color of white, FFF. And my margin, I've got a width of. I think I made 80% and the border I think was like five pixels red. I'm going to change that so that it's like two, two PX um, solid. Black. Okay. I don't recommend this sort of design elements, but you'll just see what, uh, as an example of what we're doing, I've got like a 20 pixels of head uh, in here. Okay, my figure width, um, I'm going to make that, let's say, 80%. About that, 80% in the image, the background color was white. Padding was three pixels, I think. And the border was two px solid. Something like that. Okay, now my font colors were, um, I think I just had red, but that's not a good color to have. So I'm gonna give it a purple for now. Uh, the font size for my H1, let's say let's make it at 4EM. And the font family was, it's in the code. Roboto. Oops, sorry about that. Roboto, sounds okay. Um, so that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good start here for just, for just these elements. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, now let's go down to my phone screen, okay? You can do the tablet first, you can do the phone first, whichever one you want. Now for the, HTML, I still want to have that maybe that dark gray for a background color. And for the body of the page, I still want it to be white. The, mar the width, however, is going to be different. You can see the width right now, I have a width of 80%. For my phone, I'm going to want a width of 98%. Okay. Um, I'm going to have border, no border. And padding, I will give it maybe three pixels. Okay, that might even be too much, two pixels uh, for the padding. All right, my figure width, I'm going to want to make that 100% of the left and right elements. And um, 
I'm going to have the same setup here for my background colors, white, three pixels. I'm gonna change that around a little bit. I want the background color to be white. I want the padding to be two pixels. And I want the border to only be one pixel solid and then black, okay? And you can see how I'm building this a little bit differently. The color here will be purple again. Font size, I'm going to change. Right now I have it at 4EM. I'm gonna change that to 3EM. Um, but the font family is gonna be exactly the same. Okay. Now, um, I want to come back up here to the floats because that's something I want to make sure I highlight. Now, the width that we gave these floats here in the beginning was 48% so that they would appear side by side, if you recall, right, because we're on the computer screen up here. Um, remember, we had things side by side. Um, on my phone, however, I don't want this to be left or right. I left this in here so that we can make sure that we change it. Uh, I want these to be, if we go back to the sketch that I just drew, I, I can't do that right now, but if we go back to the sketch that we just drew, we know that we had things stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna do a float none, okay? And I'm gonna make my width 100%. Okay, so this is again 100% of the screen size, of the phone screen size. That's how wide it's going to be, okay? And you can see here that that's 48% and this is uh, 100%, all right? Now we would go through and do the same thing on our tablet. I'm not gonna do that, but you can go through and I want you to make sure that you're adjusting each individual thing uh, for the tablets, okay? Now, this is how we start to build the responsive design. We start to think about the elements that we're starting with on our computer screen, how they are adjusted based on what we are doing on our computer, on our phone screen. And then we go down to our tablet screen to see how those uh, things work, okay? Now, there's another step in this process which is extremely important. Okay. And that is to think about the things that we are designing that overlap from one screen to the next. Okay. And I'm going to get out my little highlighter here so that you can see uh, what they are. So for example, the background color and the text align center, right? That is the same on each of the elements right, phone screen and computer screen. And it's gonna be the same thing on my tablet as well. The background color of my body is the same. And the margin auto is the same, right? Background color. Um, okay, the width, the border, and the padding are different, okay? Now my figure, the figure I have a margin of auto, right? Margin of auto. The IMG, max width, 100%, background color white, max width, 100%, background color white. H1, color, Font family, H1, color, font family, okay, and so on. So we can see that each of these elements are this is going to be the same, and they're going to be the same on all the different screen sizes. I know that ahead of time, just because of how I'm planning this out, that they are going to be the same on the tablet, on the phone, and on the computer screen, okay. So what I can do is that I can go up into my uh, main area and I can start moving things 
that are going to be the same across all the screen sizes. So for example, my HTML is gonna have a background color of gray and a text align center. It's going to apply to the phone and the tablet and the computer, okay? That means I just need to have it in my main area, okay? I don't have to have it in the phone because that will trickle down and apply to it anyway, all right? So I can go back to my document. I should move these closer together so it's easier to find them. There we go. Um, I can go back here and I can go to my, the body. Okay, I see the body is um, background color and margin auto. So what I would wanna do is I can go back to my code and this should be 80%. Let me change that. Um, I can take this code that I've just sort of written in here, I'm gonna sort of override the body that I have in the computer right now. And I can see that the background color and the margin auto are going to be the same across all of them. So I can delete them from the uh, computer. Okay, I can paste that in here at my bottom curly brace. And now I have the body, background color, and margin auto applying to all of the different screen sizes. Okay, I can do the same with the figure. Figure, margin, auto. It's always going to be that doesn't have to be down here. I can just delete that. My IMG, which is always going to have a max width and a background color. That is that. Regardless of what screen size it is, it will always be that. And then I can keep going down the line, H1. Uh, apply the H1 that I created here on this phone screen. Okay. For my H1, I know that it is always going to have the purple color and the font family. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this, pop it in here, delete the font size, because that's going to be something that changes. Okay, and I can delete the color and the font family on there. Okay. And you can see what we're doing now is we are foregrounding the main section. We are ensuring um, and we're reducing redundancy, as I'll show you in a minute. So we're foregrounding this main section and um, making it so uh, that everything that's applying to all the screen sizes is in one place. And then for the minor little adjustments, padding the boarding orders and those kinds of things, we will be able to make those changes uh, as, as necessary. Now I can save this and it will make, and we'll, and we'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna save it so I don't lose my work. Um, but what I wanna do now is I want to start getting down to the phone screen, okay? So for my phone screen, I know that I'm gonna have a different body and a the figure and the image and so on and so forth. So I can, if I've created this in this document here, I can just copy all this over. Up into my phone screen. And I will delete the items that I don't need, right? Um, figure, I know that I have the margin auto, so I don't need that. I just need to apply my width to it. My uh, Here, I know that I have IMG, max width, and delete those. I can delete my color purple. I can delete the font size family, and I just have the font size here. I will need the math in here, so I, I'll put that in a later time. Um, 
And you can see the H1 font size three, font size four, right? IMG, padding three pixels, padding two pixels, border one pixel, border two pixels. Minor changes, but important, uh, I, I think. Figure with 80%, figure with 100%, body with 95, body with 80. So you can see that the main ports of, in the main area, these are all the same, and then we're making minor adjustments based on where we are on our different phone uh, and screens of phone and tablet uh, sizes. Okay, save this as well. Uh, the one thing else I want to grab, make sure I grab from here is I want to get my floating. Left, right, none. Okay. You can see we have the left, right, 48% in, in this code. Uh, we want to put it in here as well. Float none with 100% with 100%. Okay. Now the floats are completely different, right? We've got the float left, float right. Uh, so we want to make sure that those are going to be stayed the same. You would do the same for your paragraph, your list, your H2s, H3s, and so on as you're going, going through. Okay. So I am going to uh, save this. Okay. I have my styles. I'm going to upload to my styles folder. Probably click on that so I know what to transfer. Okay, there's the transfer. So here is what my computer screen looked like before. I made some changes to it. So, uh, and you can see that changes were just reflected. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down to get to the phone screen size. And here it is at the phone screen, and that's what it looks like. You can see how it changed. Watch the board. Watch the the eighty percent dropping down to 98%, okay? The left and the right are now stacked on top of each other because I did my float none. And the image is a full 100% of that area. You can see now that it's, it's um, I, well, it was 100% before too, I think, I'm not, if I recall correctly. Um, but you can see how we are now moving in different directions. And if I want to now, I can go, okay, so for my tablet, which I haven't done on the piece of paper, but I'll do very quickly here, uh, for my body, I will pop that in here. And I know that uh, my width is going to be, let's say 90% for that. And my padding will be five pixels. Um, the border might stay none, so I can delete that because it will just trickle down from the one head. And I'm going to keep that as the only thing I'm going to change. If all of these things are going to be the same in the tablet, you don't have to change them, okay? Because they'll just apply because you can see it's a minimum width of 320. So that minimum width will apply to the, anything above that until there's an adjustment coming in the computer screen. Okay, where we'll see that change. Maybe I'm gonna upload this, Styles. Hit a refresh. Now I want you to watch the margins. So here's a computer. We're at 80, 80, 80, 80. Soon it's gonna jump to 90. See how, watch, boom, boom, jumps to 90%. Now I haven't styled the paragraph or anything like that. That's why we don't see that uh, just yet on the, on the phone screen or the tablet. But you can see the change in the margin. Look right in this area here. And now when I get to the phone, you can see it jumps down to even smaller, 98, boom. Poof, there's the jump. Poof, watching this area right here. Poof, poof, there's the jump. Okay, and 98% might even be a little bit too wide. Uh, so I can always just go back in into the phone section and say, oh, I actually made it 95% in the phone. That's why it's not wide enough. I would make it maybe 99%. And I like that better.
How about, there we go. Yeah, even better with just that little tiny bit of color on the outside. I have, I have just a little bit of happy little color, just like Bob Ross would say, little bits of color. Okay. Now this process that I just went through is complicated stuff. It's requiring you to think about three different screen sizes simultaneously. So take your time with it. Say, okay, I'm gonna start with the tablet or I'm gonna start with the phone. I encourage you to look at it on your phone. Um, and if you have a tablet, my son's got my tablet, look at it on the tablet. Don't just look at it on the computer screen. Take your time with it, be deliberate, and uh, I'll see you in class.